Hi, my name is Greg Sir, and I'm the Chief of Police for the San Francisco Police Department. I was a smallish young man uh, here in San Francisco, and I'd get bullied all the time, even though I had many brothers and sisters, and I really, really appreciated when people stick up for me. I, I can't even imagine what it's like growing up as an LBGT youth today, and nobody deserves to be taunted or bullied. It does get better, and until it does, we here in the San Francisco Police Department are gonna stick up for you. Believe me, it gets better. Uh, my name is Andrea Weil. My name is Wendy Bear, and I am a sergeant. I am a commander. And I'm a sergeant with the San Francisco Police Department. 911 dispatcher for San Francisco. Officer Mari Noguchi. My name is Michelle Martinez, and I am a commander with the San Francisco Police Department. My name is Broderick Elton. And I'm a police officer. Commander. And I'm an officer with the San Francisco, San Francisco Police Department. I grew up in New York City. Houston, Texas, outside Manhattan. Grew up in Southern California. I am a native cheesehead. My father was a Sicilian man. My mother is an uh, Italian Catholic. My mom is from Japan, and she says she is made in Japan. I was a, a bit of a tomboy, not a bit, but kind of a full-fledged tomboy. It got very, very uh, awkward and strange for me because apparently I was a girl then and uh, I had to start trying to act like one, look like one. And my choice of dress was always jeans and Converse tennis shoes, and my girlfriends would be checking out the guys and I'd be checking out the girls. I had these really close friendships with my best girlfriends and, you know, was hiding from my senior prom date. There was never somebody that I could talk to because I always thought I was different. I would say by the age of five, six, I already knew that I should kind of keep it on the down low. I knew, absolutely, that I wasn't supposed to talk about it. I wasn't honest with myself, I wasn't honest with my family. You're raised with that idea that you're supposed to grow up, have a family. Find the man of your dreams who would then support you. Grow up and get married and, you know, that I would have a husband and... A wife, two children, a picket fence. No one will know about this other little part of my life. I didn't really have any positive gay role models that I thought were out there. All of the imagery that was associated with gays or lesbians was the limp-wristed hairdresser. Someone that you were supposed to laugh at or someone that was to be ridiculed. So I didn't have anything that showed me that it was okay to be who I am. I had times where I didn't want to get up and get out of bed or face the day. My self-esteem was, was really low. I think that I wanted to just not be around. I, I had thoughts of suicide, I, I was depressed. Mostly the message was that there's something wrong with me and I should just die. It just didn't feel good to not want what I thought everybody should want. It just made me angry. There was still a part of me that was a little bit ashamed. Um, when the pain got too bad in the pit of my stomach, I realized I needed to tell my parents. Mom, I, I think I'm gay. And she says, I think I knew that. <laughs> I think it was harder for me to tell my mom than it was for my mom to hear what I had to say. I was a police officer for about four years, thinking that I was the only gay male police officer in the world. I actually believed that I was the only gay male police officer in the world. Some people probably knew or suspected for quite a long time. Um, others were sort of like, huh? Their jaws dropped. Ta-da! I expected my father to have a very different uh, reaction than he did. He looked up at me and he said, are you happy? And I said, yes. And he said, then he just looked down and he goes, then who gives a shit? You know, he did sort of give me the lecture about, well, maybe playing softball isn't such a good idea. You know, because softball is the root of all gayness for women. I finally, I started crying. I broke down the phone and I, I told them. So before I come out there, I want you to know that 
I, um, I'm gay. And there was a, a very long pause and me crying and all of a sudden my, my grandfather who is by all means what everybody would think is you know just being that typical person that wouldn't accept somebody who is gay. He, um, he broke the silence and just said, Stacy, we love you. My whole world suddenly opened up. Telling that first person was a big deal. After the first few people, I just started acting like it was, everybody should know this. <laughs> Bing, I'm gay. <laughs> ah, this is, uh, this is who I am. I'll never forget this. So I open the door, like, oh my gosh, my dad's out there, and he looks at me and he says, I'm so sorry if I ever said fag. My life now is great. Okay, I, I can actually be me. I would have missed. <laughs> the first time being held by someone I love, loving, I would have missed experiencing the joy and jubilation of just life, of people who show me amazing new things all the time, new ways to think and new ways to look at the world. I never foresaw being a police officer because I thought it was always something that I couldn't do. Things keep getting better for me. It does get better and until it gets better, I will help you and I will protect you, and I will listen. And we are here to help make your transition as smooth as possible. It does get better. Oh, it gets better. You have so many people that are just like you, that are going through the same struggles you are. Things start getting better as soon as you reach out to other people. But you don't have to tolerate um, people's non-acceptance of you. You just forge ahead and you do what you love and it gets better. It just does. Nothing, nothing in life is worth harming yourself. Nothing. If you give up even trying, then they've won. You can't let them win. You're completely normal. You're, you just need to be you. You need to know that you're okay, that you are beautiful. And remember that you're, you're a person who's got tremendous value and you have something to give. You're not alone. Stop putting up with everyone's crap. Just be yourself. People might talk about you, but you know what? It's all okay. There is there is help out there. Call the police even if you have to, because we'll be there. Yes, it will get better. Don't lose your sense of humor. It gets way better. A lot better. It does get better. And your life is going to be so full of love and amazing, special experiences, and it gets so much better.